All right, let's talk numbers. And I mean real numbers. As a crypto miner here in the UK, people always ask me, how much electricity are you actually burning through? So today, I'm breaking it down. How much I've used, how much it's cost me, and what I've learned along the way. Hey guys, Blue Bear Crypto, back with another video, and let's get into it. So here's the mining setup I'm currently running. I've got six KS0 Pros, an Avalon Nano 3, a Bitax Gamma 601, a KS2 Lite, a Gold Shell KD6, and an Octominer X8 Ultra loaded with eight RTX 3070 Ti GPUs for GPU mining. It's a mixed bag of ASICs and GPUs, which means the average power usage is not small compared to an average household. So to briefly go over my electricity setup, as without it, I would not be able to afford the rates I do. I have a 9.6 kilowatt battery connected to my mains power along with nine 410 watt solar panels. If I manage my power usage carefully, I can avoid the higher rates completely whilst using a significant amount of electricity, both from the grid and through solar power. And this costs me considerably less than any standard electricity rate. To check out a detailed walkthrough of my setup, watch this video. My electricity tariff is split between peak and off-peak hours. I pay 6.7p per kilowatt from 12am till 7am and 25.3p per kilowatt for the rest of the day. So all of the rigs are on and the battery gets fully charged at midnight onwards. Then I run from the battery at 7am and then aim to run a few rigs up until around 6pm. After then, I turn the rigs off and still have enough juice in my battery to keep me going until midnight without touching those awful peak rates. I've got six KS0 Pros, an Avalon Nano 3, a Bitax Gamma 601, a KS2 Lite, a Gold Shell KD6, and an Octominer X8 Ultra loaded with eight RTX 3070 Ti GPUs for GPU mining. So here are the numbers you've been waiting for. I made this nice little Excel document to easily see how much I've used and how much I've paid. Keep in mind that I officially switched to Eon from the 19th of Feb this year, so I've only got data for how much I've paid since joining that tariff. So this is going based off about five months of usage, but my total consumption is also in the document. Starting from the 19th of Feb, this is what this data is on the top half. The bottom bit includes my consumption for the whole year, but that was previously on Octopus Agile, so I don't have the rates for that anymore, which is not too much of a problem. It gives us a good idea anyway of, of what we're paying. So in Feb, we paid £41.34 for electricity, and you can see consumption was quite low. I r started ramping it up once I got used to the actual tariff, and I also think, bearing in mind that was only 10 days, I actually wasn't confident that I was on the smart rate because you go onto a standard rate and then move over to the smart rate and I didn't want to go ham when I'm on a standard rate because you'll see why in a second. So um, yeah, we ramped up to about 900 kilowatts for the next month, 900 kilowatts again, April, and then we just went up and up even more and it has come down a little bit um, now, I think. I'm, going, I'm being a bit more careful when it comes to not actually using peak rates, whereas I was a little bit more lenient before, so I'm just trying to be a bit more strict with myself and save a bit more money. Okay, so the total that I've paid for the past five months has been £515.35, and that is based on using, so Eon has how much I've taken from the grid, so which is what I've paid for from Eon, um, it's 5,378.77 kilowatts, which is a good chunk. My total consumption, however, for the past five months, because bearing in mind we've got solar power as well, which means that we actually are using more than what we're paying for from the grid, is 7,729.43 kilowatt hours. And my actual solar production was 2,354 kilowatts for the past five months. And bearing in mind we are in the height of summer now, so as you can see the past four months it has been really really good now if we take into account the rest of the year so the january and most of feb and um, we actually 
were using a ton of electricity on agile i hadn't really accommodated for the fact that agile rates were going up so that does mean that in january i used about 1.8 kilowatts of electricity in feb about 60 percent of feb um, i was using 720 watts bearing in mind that is a combination of that plus that kilowatt so yeah total for the year so far is actually 7968.27 kilowatts which is a good chunk but that is from the grid so total including solar power is actually 10509 kilowatts um, which is a little bit insane when it comes to when you think about it the average rate of a house is like two two thousand kilowatt i think for a year so it's a lot of electricity but the really good thing about all of this in terms of how much have i saved compared to someone that would use those rates is the average uk electricity cost at the moment is about 25.73 per kilowatt so if taking into account my total that i would have taken from the grid i would have actually spent 1988 pounds 78 in electricity just from the grid that's not taking into account my solar power or anything so so the average electricity cost in the uk is 25.73 p per kilowatt so based on my total consumption um so that is grid and solar combined if somebody wanted to use that amount but take it all from the grid at the standard rate with no smart tariffs or anything you would be looking at £1,988.78. Now, my electricity cost, what I actually paid for um, from the grid is £515.35. So it's basically a quarter of what the average person in the UK pays, which is why I can do this. And sometimes it may not be profitable just based on crypto being down, but it does mean that I am a lot more profitable compared to anybody else trying to do this that doesn't have a similar setup. We've gone through the electricity costs. Now, what do I get out of all of this? The Casper miners are generating about 15.7 cas per day, which is about $1.74. The KD6 is earning 0.25 KDA a day, but that is only run for two hours of the day to dry clothes. Uh, and that costs about 13 cents. The Bitax is currently earning about four cents worth of Bitcoin daily, and the Octominer with the 8370Ti's currently brings in about 147.7 RVN or Ravencoin per day, and that's about $2.36. As you could probably tell, there's no massive gains day to day with this setup, but I'm not mining for day to day profits. There's been no selling since I started the mining shed, which means if all cryptos hits its all time high, I could be earning $3.25 from Casper, $7.06 from Cadena, and $41.36 off Ravencoin per day. And then I've got all of the stuff I've mined already that is ready to be sold. So, Breaking even really depends on market conditions. If the coins value you, that you're mining dips, you might be mining at a loss, but in a bull market, the setup starts to shine. Some takeaways from running a setup like mine. Cheap power matters more than high hash rate. If you can get cheap electricity, it's not as much of a problem if the market tanks as you can fund the costs out of pocket. Efficiency is crucial. Ideally, you want to be mining on the most efficient kit you can to amplify earnings when the bull run comes into play. Consider automation. Use timers or smart switches to cut off less profitable rigs during peak hours. You want to be hands off as possible when doing this day to day. More for your insanity than anything. Off peak mining is your best friend if you're on a tariff like mine. There's simply no way this would touch any form of profitability without smart rates. Crypto mining in the UK is not completely dead, but it is a power game. You've got to know your rates, monitor your efficiency and stay flexible. If this breakdown helped you out, drop me a like and let me know your setup in the comments. Stay tuned to find out how the crypto space is going to play out in the next few months. We might be in for some major gains as predicted in my short uploaded in August last year. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.